Well, welcome everybody to week four of our online program for February for the alumni of the Sunshine Coast Health Center. And this month we've been talking about some of the ideas of Dr. Thomas Greening, a California psychologist. And Dr. Greening says there are four basic challenges everybody has to meet. So this, uh, this month we've been looking at one a week. So the first one we talked about was how do you live a good life knowing that you're going to die? This challenge between life and death. Another one is how do you make sense of the world? Is the world meaningful or absurd? Or you know, how, does this, how do each of us approach the world? Last week we talked about free will and determine, uh, determinism. So how much of our belief in our choices, that we believe we have this uh, freedom of choice, how much of it is real and how much, how much pressure are we on from biology, from society, from family, to actually take certain actions or make certain choices. And this week, we're going to explore the fourth of uh, Dr. Greening's challenges, and that is the one between relationships or community and isolation or loneliness. So all of us, according to Dr. Greening, face this basic thing in, of our existence. And a lot of us uh, have different ideas on how to deal with this loneliness and separation. On the one hand, we now know that we are relational beings, or as Dr. Greening says, we're social beings. Uh, some people say we are hardwired, so we are from birth. This is, we are meant to be around other people. We know from psychology that a lot of who we think we are, our identity, is actually based on how other people treat us. This is actually how we will come to terms with who we are. And yet at the same time, each of us is a unique human being. That, and no two people share the same thoughts, the same, and the same way of making sense of themselves and the world around them. So fundamentally, we know that we're, all of us are different than everybody else. So how do we deal with this, this issue that on the one hand we're relational beings, but on the other hand we know we're alone. Or separate from others. So some people, according to Dr. Greening, they can't stand the thought of being separate. So they're forever around people. You probably know people like this. Uh, I don't know if we call them social butterflies or something. But they always have to be around people. I mean, they barely can spend like 10 minutes with themselves, right? So they're always around people interacting, whether that's going to parties or volunteering for things. Or, but something is always involved with other people because they can't stand the anxiety of being alone. Other people are the exact opposite, right? So it's like they're hermits. So they, they try to push people away and just stick to themselves. And they probably aren't all that happy either. I've actually met uh, two real life hermits and uh, they were interesting people, but you could tell something was different about them. So some people at any rate push people away, they isolate, and tell us they prefer to be alone. And then there's a third response to this challenge. And again, Dr. Greening would say this is probably the healthy response, the one that will lead to the most satisfaction in life. So it's a recognition that yes, I am separate from all others, but on the other hand, I am a relational being. And we've talked before about this guy, uh, this philosopher by the name of Martin Buber, <clears throat> if you remember him. And he is, his big theory was what he called the I-thou relationship. So he said one of the best ways of getting over this separateness and everything is to treat, every, to treat other people as very valuable. And it didn't really matter who the people were. That you could, but the key thing is to treat them not as an object or not as someone who is of use to me personally, but as someone valuable in their own right. So see it all the time in the world, right, where, uh, oh, this driver is useless because he cut me off. He shouldn't even be on the road, right? So that's treating someone as an, basically as an object who is interrupting my driving, right? Or uh, sometimes I get the feeling from my son in college that all I am is the bank, right? <laughs> so dad, phone up dad only when we want money. Or we might do something along the lines of, uh, well, we see that all the time in uh, uh, Sunshine Coast. Uh, for example, 
you know, someone may be useful if he, uh, you know, has an extra smoke to give you, right? Other than that, yeah, don't want anything to do with the guy, right? Those are treating people as objects, right? So it's not really, not, not, not treating them as a valuable human being themselves. And this is a, this is an important point for this response too. And you remember, or you might remember that uh, in our little dating tips, <clears throat> yeah, one of one of the most famous ones was uh, when you when you go on a date and you under, understand how this person deals with life is you go to a big fancy restaurant and then watch how they treat the help how do they treat the waiter right that will tell you more about that person than any con job they could give you right up front right do they dismiss the person do they treat them as an object or do they truly care for this person and treat them as a real human being anyway according to dr uh, uh, greening this would be a good response to this dilemma between relationships and isolation is <clears throat> A recognition, yes, we are all separate from each other. No two people share exactly the same thoughts and feelings, and they don't share the um, exactly how uh, they make sense of the world with any other human being. But in spite of that, to then form these uh, authentic connections, these human connections, and treat people as valuable human beings, because even the guy cutting you off in the car has a, probably has parents grew up in a certain family, as friends, all that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, that's our program for this month. And next month, uh, we'll be back for, uh, uh, with another idea.